In this video, we're going to look at a new component I got. The number is not showing up terribly well, but that is J175. So this is a P-channel JFET transistor. So I've been using an N-channel JFET transistor in a few videos. This is basically the uh, P-channel version of it. So I tried to get one with the same basic electrical properties, but it's going to be opposite polarity. So looking at the flat side, we have the left pin here, pin number one is the drain, the middle pin, pin number two is the gate, and then pin number three, the one on the right there, is the source. The source needs to be more positive, the gate, uh, the uh, drain, more negative, and the gate will give a signal to control how well it uh, conducts current from source to drain. So we're going to turn it this way, we're going to put the drain to that gray jumper there. The uh, gate is going to go to this orange jumper which is floating right now and then the source is the top pin. It's one row away from this resistor here and the power supply is on. I'm going to turn it off. Now we uh, take the LED we're going to bridge the gap between the resistor and the source so we can get an idea how much current is flowing and that's the nice thing about LEDs. So the long lead anode needs to be more positive short lead the cathode needs to be more negative for it to conduct and light up. If you put it in backwards it's just going to block any voltage you put across to it uh, well above 5 volts. So in any case we will turn it on and now you can see the power supply, the bench, uh, the breadboard power supply. So now you can see the LED is already on. So this transistor is normally on. We're going to use a separate power supply to give a voltage to the gate. So to begin with, I don't know what's going on with the board. I think it's getting a signal to uh, the gate. It's uh, sensitive. But uh, there we go. We're going to put this to the uh, negative there. And you can see the LED slowly coming back. And it just takes a small charge at the gate to affect things. But now it is uh, fully on. So we have the red jumper to the gate. So this is a separate power supply that we just wired up my bench power supply and so as you can see here the breadboard power supply I have set to 5 volts or I could set it to 3.3 .3 volts or you could put this little jumper in the middle you put the jumper there for 3.3 .3 volts or in the middle to cut off the power to uh, this rail but the rail is 5 volts right there now we're going to look at the voltage at the gate so that jumper goes to the middle pin the gate and there you can see we have two volts right now so I'm gonna raise the voltage from the other power supply and you're gonna see why we're using two power supplies in a little bit so if I get to five volts the same voltage that uh, we have at the breadboard power supply nothing happened or if I lower the voltage you can see the LED got a little bit brighter so it's uh, starting to turn it off by five volts but it still has a ways to go so we're going to keep turning up the voltage. You can see 6 volts, it's off pretty, pretty, uh, not completely, but uh, quite a bit. And then somewhere above, I think, 6.5 volts, we'll turn the light off. I think there's still, yeah, there's still a tiny glow. Let's go to 6.8. It looks like it is off completely, yep. So, it's uh, kind of reflecting some of the overhead light, which is not very bright. But, uh you can tell it's not actually creating any light when you put a shadow over it. So, in any case, the main takeaway is the gate has a higher voltage than the source. When we were using the uh, end channel JFET, you needed a gate with a lower voltage than the source, which went to the negative side of the power supply. So, I just used a voltage divider to make it looked like the power supply at the source had a higher voltage than it uh, normally would. I actually did. And that way it was easier for the negative rail to just be a lower voltage. In this one I'm just using two separate power supplies as you can see. But now, as I said, technically the definition is that the gate have a higher voltage than the source. That is the uh, main uh, factor in how well this component conducts. So what we can do is take uh, the black probe there 
and put that to the source right up there the top pin of the transistor and then put the red one to the gate there and there you can see we have 2.3 volts more positive and I think it's a little bit more than 3 volts that the gate has to be more positive than the source for it to fully turn off I think it can vary though a bit with uh, components but uh, there you can see 3 volts it's still on and uh, I'm not sure exactly when it'll turn off I'll turn that light off so we still have a little glow as you can see if you put a shadow on it and you still see some light coming out of it then you know it's glowing it's not reflecting so so it looks like about 3.5 is uh, when it is fully off somewhere around there so that's the definition that you get and so that uh, hopefully that demonstration clears that up because just going by that definition alone that the gate has to be in this case since it's P channel more positive with the N channel the gate has to be more negative than the source that's kind of confusing but uh, using another power supply you can see we can deliver we have to deliver a more positive voltage from another power supply to get it to turn off when we're using two power supplies so another thing I'm gonna do is I have uh, I'm gonna lower the uh, or yeah I'm gonna raise the voltage so that it's off right there and there's capacitive effects that come into play so I would wire this a bit differently if this was a, a serious circuit but uh, I'm gonna pluck that out and it didn't work that time but probably if I do this enough there we go the LED is off but it is normally on transistor so now you can see it's coming back so there's capacitive effect it is holding a charge at times without uh, if you remove the signal quickly there we go so it's holding a more positive voltage at the gate but it fades with time so it's probably like capacitive leakage and stuff it's actually a diode that we're dealing with so the component the reason why it's called P channel is the source to gate since the source is uh, more positive in this one it's a uh, P type material going across there so when you learn about diodes you learn N type and P type materials and so P type material by itself is a uh, not terribly great conductor so this has a quite a bit of resistance you can't pass high current through this and uh, if you did you'd have to have a high enough voltage where it would cause uh, too much heat to overheat so at uh, 5 volts you'll never get a ton of current but you'll get enough current to light an LED uh, that's that's no problem but uh, that's topics for other videos just be aware there's P type material flowing through here so the gate it is N type material so it's a diode you can in fact we can do a diode test I'm going to yank the uh, power supply out of here and uh, this power supply I set the current to get limited with this so even if we short circuit there uh, won't be too much current but uh, better turn it off anyways we're gonna set the meter to measure diodes and uh, so now it's now it's measuring the continuity so if we go to two ends here it beeps that's because it's highly conductive and if it has a little resistance it would show up but uh, that's not where we're looking at we're looking at diode now so I find this a lot where the diode tester and the continuity tester are usually at the same setting for uh, the meter but uh, usually there's like select unless the meter automatically gives you uh, one or the other so as I said we have P type material it's uh, the same across here so for diode testing we can either go here or here with the positive the gate is the end type material so there you can see it's conducting like a diode this is a diode tester so this is the forward voltage that we have right there and again I can go up to here and uh, it should be about the same it might be slightly different but the uh, end type material should be about halfway down the uh, P type so it's along the side now if we turn the uh, reverse which uh, probe we put here so we're putting the black probe to the P type material so negative to P and then uh, the uh, red probe we're given a positive signal to the end type material so that's a reverse bias diode it is blocking the uh, current 
from flowing through the meter right now. So if you remember, we had the gate more positive than the uh, source right there. So there was no current flowing through there other than a tiny trickle or something, if you really want to get very picky about it. But it did not depend at all on current flowing through it or anything. It was the voltage across it. And for all intents and purposes, right now no current is flowing. So, so I don't have the terminology uh, down, but it pinches off the P-type material conductively. It prevents it from conducting the more positive of a signal you give to the N-type material. And so basically it just turns it into a worse conductor, worse and worse, until finally it stops conducting. And then you remove that uh, positive signal from the gate and then the P-type material starts conducting again. So it is not a perfect conductor, as I said. And so uh, now we're going to set the meter to measure resistance. And it doesn't matter which probe we put to which side. And here you can see we have a little less than 100 ohms of resistance through the uh, source to the drain. And again, if we put it backwards, it's P-type material straight across. So, if you don't take into account the N-type material, it's kind of interesting, it was higher that way. If you don't take into account the N-type material, it's just a poor conductor. It has about 100 ohms of resistance. Let's go back the other way. And uh, so, so that's why I said you'll, you won't get a lot of current through here. It has resistance, as you can see there. And it's going to self-limit uh, current a bit. But uh, for the most part, we're using it as a switch in uh, this circuit. And so we get it so that it's fully conducting as much as it can, or it's fully blocking as much as it can, which is pretty well. If we have a positive signal there, given a reverse voltage to that uh, diode across there, the uh, N-type being more positive, the P-type being more negative, and it just cuts off how well the p-type conducts so hope that all made sense thanks for watching i will see you in the next video